Amen. Father, even now as we are about to step into your word, I pray, God, that you may let your Holy Spirit just breathe upon this word this day, Lord God. We pray, Lord God, that you may let your Holy Spirit breathe upon us, Lord God. As we enter in your presence right now, Lord, let the words of my mouth, the meditation of my heart, Lord, let it be acceptable in thy sight as you continue to be our strength and our redeemer. Holy and mighty God, we lift you up. We adore you. We magnify your holy name. And even now, Lord God, we say, Lord, let God arise and let the enemy be scattered now in the name of Yeshua. Lord God, let your Holy Spirit now rain down. We invoke you, Ruach Akadish. Yes, yes. We invoke you, Holy Spirit, now to speak to us now, Lord God. Speak to us in no uncertain way, Lord God. Amen. Speak like never before, Lord God. Let your Rima word come forth. And God, let no flesh grow in your presence this day. Amen, amen. But Lord, as I, as I get into your word, Lord yes, God, God, to bring this word to your people, yes, Lord. give me sharpness and agility amen, of wit. Amen. Let me, Lord God, be amen, able, Lord amen. God, to preach it as you have spoken amen, it to my amen. spirit, Holy yes, Spirit. Yes, God, give me clarity and, and, and Lord God, let me have eloquence, Lord amen, God, to amen. deliver your word, Lord amen, God, amen. with clarity and simplicity, Lord yes, God, Lord. that your people will be able to receive and to feed at your table this day we bless amen. your name yahweh yes, we father. exalt you now and we say be it unto us according yes, to father. your will el elohim god i pray now there are people out there who need your word they were living in times lord god where fear seems to yes, be the father. norm of the day and anxiety and uncertainty and tension lord god but we trust in you because you told us in your word to cast all your cares our cares upon you because you care for us. And so this day, God, we change our stance and we choose purposefully in our heart to take a stance, Lord God, of worship, a stance, Lord God, of adoration, a stance of focusing on God, knowing that more is with us than those who are against us. And so we, the people of God, choose now to honor you in your word, in according to your word and so we say now be it unto us according to your will in the name of the father and of the son and of the holy spirit amen 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 thank you guys for being a part of the word prayer and the word today again this is pure love ministries and you are, thank you for joining us as we are about to go into the word uh the word is a part of the service that you know we really open up our hearts and i pray that the holy spirit will speak to your heart Amen. that that reaching spirit may touch you wherever you are and whatever your need is this morning that it will be satisfied this morning we want to turn to the book of john and we're going to go to john the third chapter uh, john the apostle third chapter the uh the fourth gospel um and we speak about when we speak about the synoptic gospel we speak about matthew mark luke and we speak about Matthew, Mark, Luke as synoptic gospel because they contain stories of Jesus Christ that were very similar. Uh, we, uh, the scripture um, evangelist, so you can have it um, uh, prepared, is we're going to go from John, John 3. Mm -hmm. um, we're going to be restarting with verse 1 through to 6 first. But we just want to give the backdrop on, on John, the apostle. John is the, is the disciple that uh, God, we speak about that we say that is a disciple that Jesus loved. And with John, probably why we find John having uh, a, a different twist from the other three uh, gospels, he sent to write some of the more private things that have encountered with God because he was one of those that was considered to be closest to Christ. He was very close to Christ. Peter was also in that inner circle. You would often hear Christ move away to a smaller circle where he would move with either Peter, uh, uh, James, and John. Yes. And those were kind of the inside counsel, the yes. ones that yes. 
saw the, the, the you know the Mount of Transfiguration. Mm-hmm. They mm-hmm. they they witnessed some things that were kind of exclusive to them. Yes, so Christ yes, kind of yes. had them in an inside leadership mm-hmm. role where mm-hmm. when he wanted to do things that he wanted to expose to this world, but wanted to keep it with a sense. Uh, maybe these were probably some of the stronger. You know, you have believers, but you have some that are mm-hmm. that that are that are like ministry carriers. Mm-hmm. These were some of those. They were stalwarts in the ministry of the of the discipleship of Christ. And so we see John being one that kind of, you know, where, where the synoptic gospel, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John share a basic core material. Um, each of them also contain narratives, although they share basic core material, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, each of them contain stories that were probably um, included in one that wasn't included in another but when we come to the book of john we find that the gospel of john however offers readers a large narrative of teachings that occur only within john itself and that is probably because um being so close to um um, yeshua john had a lot of one-on-one insights and there are certain things you know if you want to call it best friend when you're a best friend with somebody if, if i say me yes, you're a best friend yes, yes. i give you some secrets yes, that i might yes, not give yes, others yes, yes. now not to say that there was a favoritism where christ is concerned but there is a closeness that existed that john got some of some information and some insights that probably was excluded <laughs> from the other book today we are going to speak to one of such stories that is only included in the book of John and this is the story of uh, uh, Nicodemus <laughs> Nicodemus Nicodemus is a very interesting character and today if we were going to choose a topic we are saying that to enter the kingdom of God you must be born again born again and if you are in your room this is a part in my preaching where i would say turn to your neighbor and say you must be born again yes so if you are in your house and you are with your children are you with your husband are you are on the job or wherever you are well on the job don't do it but if you are anywhere else and you are yeah, able too. to speak and you are able to say it you can turn to your neighbor at this point and say you must to enter the kingdom of god you must be born again this is a fact. This is a, a fact. And we spoke last week about fact and we talk about truth. This is a fact and the truth. Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> because you cannot receive the things of God except you allow yourself to enter into the kingdom of God and to be born into the newness of Christ. Amen. Christ is a vital ingredient that is necessary for us to be able to deal with the things that are of the kingdom of heaven. Because yes. remember, none has come from heaven before Christ mm. and come down to earth. He is the first son of God that was sent down from heaven to teach us the kingdom of God, mm-hmm. because that is something that was lacking. Never before have we heard anyone spoke as to the kingdom of God before mm-hmm. Jesus Christ, because no one understood heaven yes. as one that lived and reigned in heaven and came down to teach us the principles of yes, God. Yes. So I would say to you that when we are teaching Jesus, this is something that you absolutely want to pay attention to mm-hmm. because this is God speaking. Mm-hmm. Now, when we spoke about the synoptic gospels and we say that they present Christ from many different angles, uh, you know, Matthew might present him as a servant mm-hmm. and, you know, and, you know, Luke might present him, you know, as, as a lion and, and the eagle. But when it comes to John, John presents Jesus Christ as the son of God. Hmm. Son of God, which is is speaking purely to his deity. When you read the entrance of John, John doesn't start by giving genealogies. Mm -hmm. He doesn't start by saying uh, in the beginning was Adam and Adam gave son, you know, uh, um, new Eve and they gave birth to a son and he come down with lineages. He did not do that. Mm -hmm. He went straight to the kingship and the lordship of God. And when he introduced the book in John 1, 1, he said in the beginning was the word. Yes. And the word was God yes. and the word was with God, God. Yes. and without him was nothing made. Hallelujah. He did not go through any lineage of man. He went straight to the deity, yes. straight yes. to the Lordship yes. and the yes. Godship of Jesus. 
Yes. And today he speaks. I like John because John speaks of God as, as of Christ Jesus as the Son of God. Yes. And he just speaks exclusively from the term of God man on earth. Mm -hmm. And I like that because that is something that earth has never experienced mm -hmm. before. And so he's speaking from an angle of God. God with us, Emmanuel. Yes, 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 yes. And this morning, I want to share this because the central truth, if there was one that I want to bring to you today by the climax of this message, is that we should have understood and know that Jesus Christ is God's provision for salvation. Mm. There is no other provision for salvation. He says, I am the door. <laughs> if any man enter through me, he shall be saved. And the word of God, if we were going to choose a golden text and we're going to choose a central uh, a scripture that we want to use as, as the PowerPoint of this day, we want to choose John 3.16. And we are preaching. Today, we want to call it that we are going back to the basics. Mm -hmm. Because sometimes we try to go, we get so deep and so superficial. And we last, last week, we, a week, a few weeks ago, we spoke about those people who are ever learning and not coming into the truth. Yeah, yes, not yes. coming into the truth because there is one truth. Mm -hmm. And men are always trying to create other doors. But there is no other door. Uh, you know, when we look in secular history, people will say, well, there seem to be, have been many records of immaculate conception. You know why this was? Because the enemy had a plot. He's a liar. He has gone into the kingdom, yes, of Egypt and gone into the kingdom of Assyria and gone into the kingdom of other Babylon and, and, and put up these other. He went ahead because he knows what is supposed to happen in history. Mm -hmm. And so these, these imposters yes, pose as though they, they are imitators. Understand this about the enemy. Oh, the right. enemy is not a creator. He's not an originator. He is a thief and an imitator. Yes. So what he does is try to create a counterfeit version mm -hmm. of what Christ, what, what God, the creator, mm -hmm. the creator of heaven and earth, the one who says, let us in the beginning. Yes. He is the divine creator of all things, but the enemy is an imposter, an imitator, a counterfeit, and a thief. Yes. <laughs> Just to give you a few of his names. Yes. So what he does well is that he likes to go ahead. Mm -hmm. When he hears that there should be a Messiah, mm -hmm. he go ahead and create imposters. And even in the end, he's going to come back with another imposter who is going to pose as though he is the son of God. He will be a deceiver. He's going to be the Antichrist. He will set himself up in, this, in the house of God, in the city of God, and pose to be God. But that's exactly what his MO is. He is an imposter. He's a thief. He's a camouflage. He's a con man. He's a trickster. He's a liar. Anything that you can come up with to de describe someone who is there to deceive and to lower you and to deceive you and move you away from the promises of God, that's what the enemy is. <laughs> Why are you speaking to this, Pastor? Because I want to give you a backdrop as to how John speaks about Christ as being the way, yes, the truth, yes. the life, and then how the imposter poses, poses himself to those men who who pretend to be so, you know, learned, mm -hmm. and he gives them a delusion. The Lord said that they will believe the, the, the truth came to them and they did not believe the truth. So he sent them a strong delusion that they yes. should believe a lie. Yes. Yes. So now we are going to hear, break to you the word of truth and nothing but the truth. And I say today, the truth of God's word is that Jesus Christ is God's only way to salvation. It is the hard truth, but it is the truth. And so... Without Christ, there is no other way to get to God but through Jesus Christ. And so we are going to talk a little bit about this today. Amen. Go ahead, evangelist, and we are going to look at this very unique character. Um, understand, that when we look at the other synoptic gospel, another thing I want to make point of before we get into this word. The other synoptic gospel present Pharisees and scribes from a from a position of like they are enemies of Christ. Mm -hmm. So there were none of these other synoptic gospel that spoke of the Pharisees and scribes in any sense of that they were supportive or would ever even give ear to Jesus Christ mm -hmm. in any way because all that was existed in them was jealousy and rival. And they just always was against Christ from the jump. They questioned John the Baptist 
but they yes. kind of backed off and yes. he also spoke of them and their hearts and Christ was lethal with his words. Yes. Christ did not hold back truth. Christ just spoke it to them. And so they, they were, they came after Christ relentlessly and ultimately they were the ones responsible for crucifying Christ. Yes. So we understand that this is a, they were like a, a brutal enemy throughout the gospels, but we see John here opening and pulling back the veil and yes, showing us yes. Yeah. giving us a, a bird's eye view yes. into someone who came to Jesus by night. Yes. And that within itself tells you that this was not a popular action of a leader yes. Yes. and a Pharisee because we, it's like, you know, say, all right, so they just had an election in Jamaica. Mm -hmm. So oh, huh. somebody who is well known as a GLP yes. decide that he's going to sneak and go and have a talk. <laughs> with the head of the PNP party, you have to do that by night. Yes. Because if people see you, you know, say that is a big headline. Yes. So he knew that because he was standing for the party of the Pharisees yes. and scribes yes. yes. and yes. what they stood for by the, he did not want to identify himself. So he took a back door yes. and sneak and have a conversation with Christ. Yes. Yes. Let us get a, 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 a look at that conversation. Go, go ahead, evangelist, and read uh, uh, John 3 from verse 1 through to 6. There was a man of the Pharisees mm -hmm. named Nicodemus, mm -hmm. a ruler of the Jews. Mm -hmm. The same came to Jesus by night mm -hmm. and said unto him, Rabbi, we know that thou art a teacher come from God, mm -hmm. for no man can do these miracles that thou doest mm -hmm. except God be with him. Mm -hmm. Jesus answered and said unto him, mm -hmm. Verily, verily, I say unto thee, Except a man be born again, mm -hmm. he cannot see the kingdom of God. Mm -hmm. Nicodemus said unto him, How can a man be born when he is old? Can he enter the second time into his mother's womb mm -hmm. and be born? <laughs> Jesus answered, Verily, verily, I say unto thee, Except a man be born of water mm -hmm. and of the spirit, mm -hmm. he cannot enter into the kingdom of God. <laughs> that which is born of flesh mm -hmm. is flesh. Yes. And that which is born of the spirit <laughs> is spirit. Woo! Yeah. We're going to talk about some sweet topic today. That which is born of the flesh is flesh. But that which is born of the spirit is spirit that within yeah. itself we could spend a hour on that mm -hmm. just talking about that which is born of the flesh and that which is born of the spirit but i want to zone in on chapters one and two where it says there was yes. a man of the pharisee and we spoke about pharisee yes. and we spoke about his position because he was a leader of the jew yes. and he was a ruler and the same came to jesus by night and now he's titling jesus mm -hmm. he's saying rabbi a teacher mm -hmm. coming to jesus christ identifying somewhere this is the early stages of jesus ministry mm -hmm. evangelists mm -hmm. and somehow this this sanhedrin this this high teacher of the law and this high teacher of the people of israel and this high this this teacher of the law nicodemus found himself in a position where he came to christ calling him rabbi something must have happened that caused him mm -hmm. from verse one to verse three that caused him to get to a place where mm -hmm. he came to this acknowledgement that jesus christ must be what yes. what do you say for thou must be a teacher come from god no man can do these miracles except god be with him now according to john we would have to think back to some of the things that happened leading up to verse three yes what has happened already that would cause this man this this man who is not so quick to believe notice note very carefully he did not say you must be the messiah 
He, he did not say you must be you must be the son of God. He did not say you must be the one that David spoke of or the one that Moses spoke of or the one that 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 that, that um, Isaiah spoke of that was supposed to come to be the deliverer. Of, he did not go to those names. Mm -hmm. What he went to was just to say that you must be a teacher sent from God because one thing he knows in his teaching and in his own understanding mm -hmm. of spiritual world and entities no man can do these things except, except mm -hmm. god be with him yes. but of course being a pharisee it would have been a hard stance mm -hmm. for him to say i accept you as the son of god mm. why didn't he just come and say I, I you must be the son of god at this point there's nothing in Nicodemus conversation that says that he is giving Christ his rightful mm -hmm. title. Yes. So now we can understand setting that stage just between these two verses, we can see why Christ would give him an answer like the one that he gave him mm -hmm. because he came to Christ not knowing because of those biases and those cultural blocks that right. were set up in his life because of his position so he had a preconceived notion of how the christ should come yes 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 because yes. your mind is already set yes so that if god is going to speak to me he must come in a robe. Mm -hmm. He must be robed like King David, robed like King Solomon. He must be wealthy and he has to overthrow the kingdom of Caesar. Yes. Because he must come with signs and wonders to deliver his people and to restore Israel to the throne. Mm -hmm. So I will not call you the Messiah. Yes. Because you are, you cannot be the Messiah. But one thing for sure, you are yes. not of the devil. You are of God. Mm. So I understand that you are a teacher. I understand that you are wise. I understand that you are sent by God. Yes. So he declared, look at it between, we are on St. John and the third chapter, and we are reading from verse 1 through to 2. We are just explaining the backdrop of what, how, Oh, Nicodemus approached Christ. Mm -hmm. And the angle that he took exposed to us what his limitations were mm -hmm. and how, what he could receive from yes, Christ. Yes, yes, yes. Isn't it funny how oh, two verses of just how, how you approach God already tell wow. God what you can receive from him and wow. what you cannot? Wow. Ooh. wow. I'm speaking to someone today. Mm -hmm. We need to get from a position of approaching God from what we see mm -hmm. and what our minds can yes, discern yes, yes. and get to a place where we can allow our spirit as what the word of God says, cast not, I mean, lean not to your own understanding. Mm -hmm. Because what was happening here was that this great teacher of the Jew and this member of the Sanhedrin was leaning to his own understanding. Yes. He was thinking to himself that, well, based on what we expect the Christ to be, you cannot be the Christ. Yeah. That is pretty much what he was saying. But I do believe that you are a great teacher sent from God. Mm -hmm. So you can hold that position, but you cannot be our Messiah. <clears throat> mm -hmm. And you cannot be our King. And you cannot be our Lord, wow. but you can be a teacher sent from yes, God. Yes, so yes, yes. from the perspective of one teacher Restricting. to another yes. teacher, I'm going to ask you some questions because I don't understand. How do you do this? Mm. Huh? Are you seeing this? Yes. Come on, Sister Brianna. I see you have something to say. And let me just say this for those who are here for the first time. In my teachings and when we are teaching the word, we say that no one has limitation to speak. If you hear something from God and you want to say something about the word, you just hold your hand up in the Zoom chat or you go ahead and make your, your notations out there on Facebook and we will find a way to bring it in, bring in your contribution, bring in your, your, your talk and your perspective on what your revelation that God, because we believe that the Holy Spirit can speak through anyone as he did with young Samuel in the house of a priest. 
if he bypass the priest and talk to the young boy in the house, it means that God can speak to anyone. So uh, now I'm going to open the floor and say, Brianna, go ahead and share what you just heard from uh, what you, well, your perspective of what you, you got as, as we're teaching the word. Um, it just kind of stuck out to me that he was using his own thought process, his own previous understanding to basically mm -hmm. process what's going on. And I've, I was reading something about psychology and stuff like that. And it was, it kind of seems like he was using top, top down processing mm -hmm. instead of bottom up processing. Mm -hmm. He was allowing his previous preconceptions of what was supposed to be going on mm -hmm. to basically determine what he saw because it's clearly to everyone else that does not have any information about oh i'm a pharisee and i know all this and i know all that they look at christ and they see the son of god mm -hmm. they see the truth because they don't have these these um preconceptions that are basically blocking there them from seeing the truth so i think it's just a matter that now we need to actually see what is there mm -hmm. and not what we want to see we have to make sure that what we are following is really Christ, is really Jesus, mm -hmm. and not something that we want to see, something that we want to follow because it looks easy, because it looks fun, because mm -hmm. it looks like what I think a religious person should be like. Mm. And that is, you are exactly right. Go ahead. And you know what, Pastor Wayne, mm -hmm. I, I just thought of prayer mm -hmm. when I saw how we approach God, Yeshua. Yes. Because when you are, the word of God says, he that cometh to God must believe, must that, believe he, that, that he, he is. is. <laughs> and that he is a rewarder of mm -hmm. them that diligently seek him. Yes. And if you're going to come to God and you're already coming with doubt, yes. restriction, limitations, if you can come James to God said that. Mm -hmm. already and know that he is God, mm -hmm. he is the creator, he is the healer, deliverer, sent from God, whatever mm -hmm. I come and ask, you have already sold yourself short. Yes. You're so not going to receive anything from him. Actually, him. James says that if any man come to God not believing that yes, he must yes. first believe that he is and that he is a rewarder of them that a diligently seek him. A double-minded man God. cannot receive anything from God. Without so faith, without it's faith, it is impossible possible yes. to please God. So if he doesn't first, yes. as you say, evangelist, yes. acknowledge who God is, yes. Yes. how yes. can you receive yes. from God? And then you know what, Pastor mm -hmm. Wayne? Mm -hmm. Glory to God. Mm -hmm. We have to be so careful mm -hmm. that we are believing man-made stuff, man-made we are following religion yes, and, and not following Yeshua and yes. Christ. Mm -hmm. Because many of us, our prayers are not being answered yes. because we are praying religion and culture, not praying the word of God Ooh, to God. Come on. We come and you we pray speaking. for different things. Hallelujah. And we are not praying in accordance <laughs> to the word of Hallelujah. God. Hallelujah. And yes. we are praying contrary. Yes. So already there is a block. Yes. So we have to know the word of God, know who <laughs> Jesus Christ is. Come on. Then you come to God and you pray and you say, God, your word says. To look at how Christ taught us to pray. What is the introduction of the our father, our father, father you have got to acknowledge yes. that yeshua Je jehovah jehovah is our father yes. that yahweh is our father in heaven and he say hallowed be thy name yes. thy kingdom come you understand so 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 the whole matter of prayer starts with an acknowledgement of the one to whom you pray to mm -hmm. so in this case even though nicodemus was beseeching Christ, he did not beseech him in his rightful title. Do you realize when people like even blind Bartimaeus call on Jesus, what did he say? Jesus, son of David, have mercy. Have mercy. And he said, because why? And he said that thou art the Christ. Yes. When you are able to recognize Jesus, you know what is the problem, evangelist? Too many people come to Christ making requests without having a relationship, without knowing the man, without knowing the God man, without understanding the core requirements. Christ said it. And John, I love John because John is a disciple of love. He is the one that speaks of God and speaks of Christ in his godship in his deity and and he's the one that says that this is how you love christ he says if you love he says if you love me speaking john speaking with the term in terms from christ's perspective he says if you love me you 
keep my commandment this morning we spoke about sacrifice this morning we spoke about a worship a worship that will be received by god and we speak about love being that umbrella on which our sacrifice sits because our heart is the altar if we are talking about remember we are not offering uh, a turtle dove and and and, and lambs and, and and goats and 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 bullocks and all of those things now in this time that we're living mm -hmm. so now just as how the whole matter of sacrifice and praise has been transformed to become something that happens in your body because now your body is the temple of yeah. god and now you are called according to romans 12 to to present your body as a living sacrifice so now this sacrifice that you offer up if your heart is not in the right place that is what is considered to be the altar and you cannot offer up an an offering on a dirty altar you have got to clean your house before you come to god to give your gift of worship yes 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 where are you going with this pastor yes. i'm talking about for you to first enter into the presence of god and make any request of god you must first know who he is Amen. he that cometh to god must know it must know that he is and that he is a rewarder oh. of them that diligently seeking. so he was seeking god for sure yeah but did he know what he was seeking and whom he was seeking mm -hmm. he was seeking in his mind and this is what I, if i were to title this section of, of the teaching it is about seeking christ how do you see christ mm. before you can see christ you have got to know before you can knock you have got to know who you are knocking on what door are you knocking on because are you knocking on pastors door are you knocking on the popular artist door are you knocking on social culture door are you knocking on political political stance door or are you knocking on the door of the living resurrected christ mm. Because when you acknowledge who he is, that he's the one that is sent down from God, then God can start, then Christ can speak into your life. Amen. Then you can experience the new birth. But if you come from a position of not knowing, then immediately you're already operating in error. Yes. yes so you cannot receive yes, from God. Yes, yes, so now some people look and they say, boy, Christ was so hard with this man because when you read the scripture just now, evangelist, what you read and what you show was like Christ just sounding like he was being such a hard, like he's making it so mythical for him that mm -hmm. he cannot, he's like, you have to be born again. That is like somebody saying, uh, for you to be, for you to be somebody good, you know, you have to be born again. <laughs> you know, that feels is like an insult. It's like, what? That's impossible. Are you trying to insult me? Are you trying to? Tell me, like, uh, it's impossible for me. Because that's what he's saying. And, and, and Nicodemus is a learned man. So he understood that Christ was telling him that you need to be born again. That what, in other words, from the position that you started, it is impossible for you. Mm. Because you, are not, you have not acknowledged mm. the first process oh. for you to receive this gospel. First step, for you yeah. to receive, you have to first recognize that it is one. God, Jesus Christ yes. is the way. Yes. And if you miss that, yes, Every. you don't have any way to get to him. Yes. yes. So you, you have to go be born again. Yes. Start over. <laughs> you have to start over from the beginning. You have to come to this first realization where you are open mm. and born to the truth yes. of the gospel that Jesus Christ is the way. Mm -hmm. So that is what he needed to be reborn to, to, the, to, to, the, to wow. the truth of the word that Jesus Christ is the way. Yes. <laughs> yes. What a mighty God we serve. Do you have anything that out there that you want to? Okay, because I saw you looking. Otherwise, we continue. I saw um, mm -hmm. Brother Michael made, made a note, an yes. important note. He says, um, most people pay attention more to politics mm -hmm. and willing to die for their party. But coming to Christ, who have the power to kill both man and spirit, mm -hmm. this, it has been on his mind all week yes and sister denver was just highlighting online denver mclean that mm -hmm. see what is there and not what you want to see Ooh, and i saw sister sue that say lead me lord give me a heart like yours mm -hmm. wow that is a powerful prayer you pray there my beloved sister bailey that is a prayer that is where we have to get to a place where we say lord give me a heart like you that i can here is what the prophet isaiah we see when eyes are open. Yes. 
Isaiah could not, although he was called to be a prophet yes, to the nation, yes, yes. he could not receive the real eagle eye anointing until he what? Until he saw who? The Lord. The high Lord. Lifted up. Yeah. So in the case of Nicodemus, if you can't see the Lord high and lifted up, how can you receive yeah. the call to go? Step one first. Step one is that we have to acknowledge him Amen. as Lord and Savior. Amen. So Nicodemus was not in that position. And I want you to turn to an, uh, if you look at John, um, John 2 evangelist, just go over to, to the same book of John, yes. verse 2, John 2 and verse 23. Just read what it says there. Uh, that verse mm -hmm. john 2 23 mm -hmm. when therefore he was risen from the dead mm -hmm. his disciples remembered that he had said this unto them and they believed the scripture and the word which jesus had said um is, is that saying john yeah john 2 22 john 2 23 23 or oh, 23 mm -hmm. now when he was in jerusalem mm -hmm. at the passover in the feast day, mm -hmm. many believed in his name mm -hmm. when they saw the miracles which he did. Okay, so let's mm -hmm. talk about why uh, Nicodemus was here sitting yes. with Jesus. Yes. Because only two chapters gone already. Yes, yes. So there it tells you that many believed on Jesus because of what? Because of the miracle they saw him do it. Yes. So all you see is a miracle worker and they are following signs and wonders. So you say, okay. I believe it, like Moses, you're one of the great prophets and you have worked signs and wonders. So I acknowledge you that you are sent from God, okay? But you are not the Christ. So we are saying that like many of the other uh, people who existed in the time of Jesus, they are just this early in the, in, in the writings of John, we believe that they may have believed on the name of Jesus because of these miracles that happened at the Passover in Jerusalem. Yes. That is what really caused them to really get to a point where Nicodemus was yes. now sitting in the presence of yes, Jesus and, and, and seeing him and saying, you know what, okay, maybe you are a good te your teacher and mm -hmm. we know that God is with you. Yeah. So I, I, I am bothered because I feel like my life is empty. Mm -hmm. I'm serving God and I'm a leader, but there's something that you have that I don't have and I yeah, want it. Yeah. So now he's coming to Christ to talk because because he realized that he's lacking the power. Yes. He's lacking power. that anointing. Yes. The anointing it. and the power yes, that Christ yes. had to just speak with faith and God responded. They knew that God was with him. Mm -hmm. But one thing they would not acknowledge is the words that was coming out. So this was mm. preceding. This was before Christ got to the teachings, such as teachings as where he talked about um, doing good on the Sabbath mm. and those things that were offensive to them. <laughs> yes. You understand? Yes. So now at this point, we did not see most of it. Um, a lot of what you see the other synoptic gospel wrote about, these were not introduced yet because they just kind of maybe just moved to a point where uh as far as we are concerned, they, they have always been this way, they have always hated Christ, and they have never they did they did not speak of this experience, maybe because he came to Christ by night. And maybe John was one of those persons who was with Christ at that time. So it may have been a, it, it's obvious it was a secret meeting. So a secret meeting would have meant that maybe not all the other apostles were there. So maybe not all of them have witnessed this whole encounter. Yeah, yeah. So that's why they were not able to write about it. But John was probably in that party. It could have yes, been Peter, yes, James, and yes, John. Yes. And of those who write the, the, the Gospels, John would be the one that was there. Mm -hmm. You understand? It probably was a very inside closed door meeting yes. because this high official was coming to see Christ. Mm -hmm. You understand? So, so, so that could have explained why John is the one that wrote this thing. Now, we get to the point now where we are saying that that he acknowledged that he's a teacher sent from God, a prophet, not the prophet that Moses predicted, not the Messiah, but really just a, a man sent from God. Now, let us move a little further with Jesus answering this man. Let's see what Jesus said in verse 3. Jesus said, as evangelist read earlier, Jesus answered and said unto him, Verily, verily. Now, anytime Christ starts a statement by saying verily, verily, he is really coming to say pay attention yes. truly yes. truly yes. hear me people yes. hear me hear yes. me and yes. make no mistake this is what yes. he's saying make no mistake verily verily i say unto you except a man be born again he cannot mm. see the kingdom of god now christ come back and emphatically state it again 
after telling the man in verse one and two, you know, and the man big up Christ and he, he, he big up Christ and him say, you know, yeah, 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 you know, you, you are this person and you are that person. And after making his introduction, Christ just responded to him in verse three because he saluted Christ. Because exactly. if you are coming yes. to a king, understand this, when you come to a king, to ask any request of this king or to hear your case be heard, you have to first acknowledge the king. And to give obeisance, yeah. And you have to lord the king and bow down and mm -hmm. show your reverence mm -hmm. to the king. And then you make your case. This man did not do that. Mm -hmm. So then Christ say, number one, verily, truly, truly, I say unto you this day, for except a man be born again, he cannot see Christ. You know, he cannot enter the kingdom of Christ. So the opening phrase of Christ here express a strong emphasis. Jesus asserted uh, that unless Nicodemus be born again, uh, and born again in the Greek term that is used here, the Hebrew term that is used here is, no, it's a Greek term. And the Greek term here translates to mean born, born from above. Mm. So, Born again in this, thing, in this stance is not just born again in a natural sense. It, the Greek word that is used here is except a man be born above. Yes. Born from above. Yes. Yes. Born from above is the Greek term. And so he's saying to him, except a man be born from above, he cannot even see the kingdom of God. He can't even conceive it. He yes. can't even understand yes. it. Yes. And the word of God went on later on to say, um, to to, to, to the one that is not born of Christ, the things of, of Christ, of, of God, are foolishness. Yes, yes, yes. You understand? It's foolishness. You can't Earth understand it. Until, early, yes. until you are born of the Spirit of God. Yes. When people, when Christians speak, you look at them and you say, man, these guys just talk and it don't make no sense. Mm -hmm. Like, when you think about things like fear talk, Yes. Like faith is the substance of things oh, over oh, yeah. and the evidence of things not seen. You look at Christians and you say that don't make no sense. Because mm -hmm. really and truly logic is something exists if you can prove it. <laughs> you understand? And you are saying that God is saying that God is saying to you that, okay, believe it and you shall receive it. So in other words, it don't exist. But if you believe it, it will come out of the eternal and come into your existence. And so this is the practicality mm -hmm. of what Christ was bringing to this man. And so Jesus went on again. And Nicodemus said in verse, four, in verse 4, he said, Nicodemus said unto him, how can a man be born again when he's this old? Yes. You understand? So now he's saying, all right, let's get real now because what you're saying to me, I really don't get it. I don't understand what you're saying. Can he enter into his mother's womb a second time and be born again? So Nicodemus well recognized, may have well realized to some extent the importance of what Jesus was saying to him. Uh, if, if that was the case, his response might as well be saying, is an expression of that, are you saying that I am hopeless? Mm -hmm. <laughs> Are you just really looking at me, master, and saying to me that I am hopeless because of my situation? He was wondering, anyhow, can we pass that and get to some? And you can hear him kind of exposing the fact of that. Even by the way he asks it, he's kind of exposing the fact that I am an older man. Mm -hmm. <laughs> because he says, look yes, how he's, yes. he's saying, uh, can, can a man at this old age go back and be born again? So yes. you can tell that he was a mature man and, yes, and someone yes, was yes. up in his age. So he was putting this to Christ. But Jesus came back again in verse 5 and 6 and said, Jesus answered, truly, truly, I said, except mm -hmm. a man be born. He took it another level. Yes. Christ took it another level. He said, except a man be born of the water, and of the spirit, he cannot enter into the mm. kingdom of God. He says, cannot, that's the operative word, cannot. You want to underline the word, he cannot no. enter into the kingdom of God. That is an absolute. There is no other way to get into the kingdom of God except you be born of the water and of the spirit. And he says now, that which is born of flesh, it's hallelujah, flesh. is flesh. But that which is born of spirit is spirit. Now, um, evangelists, I want you to turn, just run over to the Old Testament. Because there's something that we, 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 all, we always teach in Pure Love Ministries. And it is that God, Jesus Christ, not even Jesus Christ doesn't teach anything mm. unless he refers to yes, the Old yes, Testament. Yes, yes. So we are going to show you today that the answer that Christ gave to Nicodemus was an answer that 
him being a learned man in the scriptures would be able to reference and understand that he was referring mm. to the book of Ezekiel. Ezekiel 36 and verse 25 and 27. We are going to ask you to go over there in your Bible and mark it. Mark because Christ will respond to no question unless he goes to the scripture. Because why? We say Christ came to walk out that which was spoken of him. Mm -hmm. Just go ahead and read what the scripture says there. Ezekiel 36. Ezekiel 36 and verse 25 through to 27. Ezekiel 36, 25 through 27. Yes. Then will I sprinkle clean water upon you, and ye shall be clean mm -hmm. from all your filthiness, mm -hmm. and from all your idols will I cleanse you. Mm -hmm. A new heart also will I give you. Mm -hmm. And what? And a new spirit uh -huh. will I put within you. A new what? Say that again. Spirit. Will I put in you? In you. Yes. yes. Mm -hmm. And I will take away the stony heart out of your flesh, mm -hmm. and I will give you a heart of flesh. Mm -hmm. And I will put my spirit within you mm -hmm. and cause you to walk in my statutes mm -hmm. and you shall keep my judgments and do them. So this is where Christ was taking him. <laughs> Christ took him to the scripture and he took him oh, to Ezekiel. To pass away, build all things you understand? He's you. saying that God first have to come in, you have to open your heart to the spirit of God. Yes. Because this transformation and this rebirth that is about to take place in your life mm -hmm. is not something that is unnatural. He said what is born of the flesh is flesh. flesh. And that's why he spoke. He said, by the sprinkling of water on you, you shall be cleansed. I will cleanse you from your filthiness and from all your idols. So we can tell that there were some things that were in the life of this man that Christ was saying to you that this sprinkling and this spirit is two things have to come into your life to remove these, these things that have blinded you to who I am and the way. And to see that I am the truth and to see that I am the life and that you cannot go to the Father. You cannot experience what I have come to bring. You cannot experience this Holy Ghost fire, this, this spirit that was supposed to fall on our flesh that was prophesied by Joel. You cannot experience that until you get back to Ezekiel 36 and verse 24. 26 to 27, where you understand that the sprinkling of the water is I, Jesus Christ, who is going to come, that was spoken of, that will sprinkle, this water will come out of you, that will transform you, take out your heart of stone and give you a heart of flesh and give you his word and put his spirit in you and you shall be transformed. He's saying that this is the prophetic thing that has now come to pass. And that is what I am I'm saying to you. So he might have realized, I mean, being learned, this Sanhedrin may have realized that Jesus was speaking to the scripture yeah. and that he was talking to enabling a spiritual birth through yes, water yes. and spirit. Now, if you go to that, he mentioned there in John 5, in verse 5. Mm -hmm. that's, that's what he mentioned in verse 5. So it is a, it is a transformation and a new creation that Jesus Christ was speaking to. Mm -hmm. And when we look at Paul in 2 Corinthians, go to 2 Corinthians 5 and verse 17. We want to spend a little time and talk about this new creation because when we talk about being born again, people get confused just like oh, we, we tend yes. to look at things yes. in the natural yes. and we tend to think that, oh, how can I enter into my mother's womb? It's a spiritual rebirth. Let me just clarify it for you now. It is a, it, it is a, it is a transformation. It is a change that takes place in the spiritual where your spiritual eyes are open, where you forget the former things and come into a newness. And let's hear what, what, what the Apostle Paul says in 2 Corinthians 5 and verse 17. What did he say there? Therefore, if any man be in Christ, mm -hmm. he is a new creature. What is it now? All things are passed away. And? Behold, all things are become new. Come on. So Christ is, this is Paul now capturing everything that Nicodemus is now being told firsthand by Christ. And Paul is now saying that when you come into Christ, but guess what? Guess what is the operative word there? What is the operative word in that scripture that he says there that Paul is speaking about? He says, if any man be what? In Christ. In what? Christ. In who? You can only experience this, this new creation if you are in Christ. 
So for him to be born again, he would have first been able to acknowledge Christ, Christ and, be, and be and realize that the only way he can be transformed yes. is through Christ. Starts there. It starts there. Amen. Go ahead, Evangelist. What you what you're hearing? No, it's just um, as you said, many times it comes back to the scripture that says Jesus is the way, mm -hmm. the truth, and the life. Yes. No man cometh to the Father but by him. Mm -hmm. But society wants to tell us that there are many ways to God. Mm -hmm. And my question has always been, okay, how is that working out for you? Mm -hmm. You know, but we it comes back to the scripture to say that no matter how we try to spin it, we try to sneak by night, we try to um doctrinate it as we say and yes. put intellectual spins on yes. it. But it comes back where it has to come through our acknowledgement of Jesus, of Jesus Christ, Christ as our Lord and Savior. Yes. There's no other way. And there's no other way for yes. salvation. Yes. There's no other way for the rebirth, for the renewal that mm -hmm. you may seek in your life. Mm -hmm. And you may say, and the word of God comes back to says, many people have a form of godliness, godliness but, but they deny the power, the power. thereof. Yes. And the form of godliness mm -hmm. here is represented through Nicodemus. Mm -hmm. He was a ruler he, of the He Jews. knew the scriptures. Yes. He knew the scriptures. <laughs> so yeah. he had that form of godliness. Mm -hmm. He was probably a Pharisee of Pharisees yes. as Paul would have said yes but just like paul yes he had that form of godliness yes. but there's no power Denying there christ and until you come in until contact until you acknowledge with christ. Yes. until you have that encounter with christ mm -hmm. that's where the power comes yes and i'm hearing again that many of you you have accepted Jesus Christ Come as on. Lord and Savior, mm -hmm. but you are not seeing the power and the manifestation. Mm -hmm. I, I'm here to tell you that you have that power within you. Yes. The Ruach Makadesh is yes. in you. Yes. But what you're lacking is the faith to step out and to open your mouth, Come on. to pray for the sick that you need to pray for, yes. to lay hands on those you need to lay out, to cast out that demon, that spirit. Mm -hmm. You have the power and that works within you mm -hmm. because the word of God says, greater is he that is in you Come than on. he that is in the world. Come on. When you become a born again believer, when you accept Jesus Christ as Lord, you invite Holy Spirit into your life mm -hmm. and he has given you all that power to tread upon serpents and scorpions. Mm -hmm. He said, greater works you shall do because I go unto my father, which yes. is in heaven. Yes. And I can testify I've been there mm -hmm. when I live years just going through the religion, yes. going through the motions yes. of saying, oh, I'm saved, I'm a Christian. Yes. Now what? Mm -hmm. But Yeshua, Jesus Christ <laughs> is calling you to higher and to greater things. Yes. He's calling you to make disciples after yourself. Yes. It's not just being saved, baptized, yes. and filled. Now what? Yes. You are to make disciples after yourself. Yes. You need to be fruitful, multiply, replenish the earth. Yes. Fruitfulness is to produce after your, your kind. kind. It's to mm -hmm. make disciples after your kind. Yes. It's to teach people the word of God. Yes. If you say, oh, I don't have what it takes. Come on. I can't do what you're doing, evangelist. I can't do what <laughs> you're doing, pastor. It's not by might. It's not by might or mm -hmm. by power, mm -hmm. but by the spirit yes. of the living God. Yes. And that comes by getting in the word of God. Yes. It's knowing the word of God. Mm -hmm. We read the scripture this morning in 2 Timothy 4. Yes. It says, listen, no matter who it is, is yes. you have an obligation to tell people that Yeshua Jesus Christ is Lord. Yes. You have the obligation to be ready in season or out of season, but first it comes if you are not saved yes. with acknowledging Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior. Mm -hmm. And when you make disciples after yourself, it's just asking people, do you believe yes. that Jesus Christ is the Son of the living God? Yes. Do you accept him as your personal Lord and Savior? Yes. And then your relationship starts then the born again believing experience starts. Then you move from flesh and earthy yes. to the spirit. Then you become all things that passed away. Yes. Behold, all there are new are things. New. All yes. things are becoming new. Yes. So it, it's step one. As Pastor Wayne said, mm -hmm. it starts with acknowledging Jesus Christ as mm -hmm. Lord and Savior. So I'm saying right now, if you're in a body or an institution or mm -hmm. in a church or somewhere where it's just religion, yes. we are just going through the motions. Yes. When you're doing things out of duty, I come against the spirit, spirit of, religion of religion in your life yes. right now. And I said, let culture. the bondage of mm -hmm. wickedness, let that culture demon, that yes. religious demon, yes. remove from your mind yes. in the mighty name of Yeshua, Jesus Christ. And I pray that you mm -hmm. may start following yes. the teachings of Yeshua. 
sure yes. and that the, the teachings of, of man yes. follow the word of God yes. and not doctrines of devils yes. because many times that what it is yes. I pray that you may shake yourself as your former way yes. and start living that abundant life yes. that spirit filled life mm -hmm. it's not just talking in tongues that yes. means do what we call and shaking and stuff yes. it's not just following doctrines and obedience it's following the word of God mm -hmm. and let the spirit of God lead you to yes. the all that Christ has led to do and if you are born again believer because yes. I've been there and you have never prayed for the sick and see them healed mm -hmm. you have never cast out a yes. devil you are not following Yeshua's yes. teachings it's not just for yesterday it's it for, for today now. yes people are perishing people are dying mm -hmm. greater works you want us to do yes. but because you're trapped in a religious system yes. you can't see the manifestations of the things of God in your life <laughs> so Yeshua is calling you to come up higher now it says many people have a form of godliness yes. but you're denying the power of God in your lives he wants to use you yes. to effect change and do miracles into the lives of people yes. but you are held bondage by religion. You are held bondage by, by doctrines and traditions. And he's calling you to come up out of it now. Come up higher, yes. he's saying. To born the of the of Spirit. God. Amen. To be born Hallelujah. of the Spirit. Be your name, so God. John, thank you so much for that word, evangelist. That was on point. John 3 and 5 Hallelujah. speaks about Glory. it is not a contrast of flesh and spirit. Mm -hmm. It is a symbolism. It is the renewal of life through the spirit that he would speak later of. When you go to John, um, the book of John, and you go to uh, uh, chapter 7 mm -hmm. and verse 38, just run over there and take a look and see what he says later on. When he spoke later on, and he says, he who believes, remember, remember Christ speak about that water that will come out of Hallelujah. you. Hallelujah. He says Thank that, you, so Lord. when you talk about being, be, being, being born of the water and of the spirit, Spirit. Mm -hmm. It comes later on. Christ John speaks again about it in, 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 in verse 38 of, of, of John 7, yes. where he speaks about it. So what he said there. He says He that, that believeth on me, yes. as the scripture had said, yes. out of his belly shall flow rivers of living water. Yes. So 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 therefore, this anointing is saying that this flesh, this flesh of yours will be transformed and by the spirit of God, and out of you shall flow that water that will transform others life just as you amen, said it just now amen, amen, amen. it is to replenish you have got to produce after yes, your own kind. Yes, so yes. you need to go out there and if god has touched you it's time for you to be a blessing Activation. to someone else yes and yes. that's what god is saying it is time for you to stop talking to yourself and yes, looking at yourself yes. in the mirror and say i can't i don't have this i am afraid of this people might say this people mm -hmm. might say that mm -hmm. listen that they loyal. call christ the prince of devils yes so stop wondering what people right. are going to say Amen. about you and yes. move according. Just say to God, God, I answer the call yes. and go. Yes. And go. Because when, he, when Isaiah came in contact yes. and he saw God yes. in that year when King Uzziah died and, yes. and he said, I saw the Lord. He I said unto him, God, he said, he said, woe is me. Mm. First of all, he confesses sin first. And when he confesses sin, and God sent an angel and took the coal from the altar and sanctified his lips, then God said unto him, Who will go? And he said, Here am I, God, send me. Somebody need with an earshot of my voice, need to answer to God and say, Send me, God. I answer your call today. Send me, Jesus. And this day we say, Whatever it is that is happening in your life, whatever it is that the enemy is oppressing you with, Jesus Christ said that, listen, he who believes in me, the key to everything is that you must believe in Jesus Christ. Amen. You must receive his word and let it take preeminence in your life, take Amen. precedence over all things. He has to have priority over all things. Amen. God first and then everything else. Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. Now, when God is number one, he says that he who believes in me, as it says in the scripture, out of his heart shall flow rivers of living water. Yeah, that is John 7 and verse 38. Now, Jesus Christ said also in John 3, 16 here, he makes it clear, a clear distinction between the natural uh, and the spiritual. He says uh, man's natural life is derived through the creator because he says what is flesh 
<laughs> what is flesh is born of flesh. Yes. You understand? But what is spirit now, he defines yes. further. He says the new birth is not a self-improvement self project. It's not mm. a physical makeover. It is not a, a 10 steps to becoming a better person. It's not 10, five steps to becoming the better you. It is about a, a rebirth, a metamorphosis. Be transformed. And Paul calls about this and he says, be not conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing. Mm. And that word transform there means metamorphosis. Yes, 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 yes. So God, Christ is calling for a spiritual rebirth. Hallelujah. And we see where Christ says in verse 7, he said, marvel not when I say unto you, you must be born again. Mm -hmm. He says, the wind blew it and the wind listed. And we hear it and we hear the sound of it and we don't know where it come and where it go. Now we have meteorologists who can tell us what is happening with the wind and how it derives and how it blows. But in the deeper sense of it, most of us don't understand the scientific uh, uh, explanation behind it. And we can only take that to be fact because who knows, next 10 years, somebody else might come out with a different fact about what they conceive the wind to be and how yes, hurricanes yes. are formed and how turnovers are formed but you know when it comes to god he's christ is is, is yes. using an analogy of the wind to say that we don't know from whence it come and where it goes but we, just the same way as the holy spirit we can't really explain it I, if i ask most of you here on this on this on, on, on this on, on this zoom chat on this meeting right now and say to you listen how did you get, you wonder, can you explain the transformation of when you got saved and what happened? All you can say is that I just know that I felt a newness and the way I saw things as one another summer, like I say, all things are passed away yes. and the old, all things become new. It's like, I'm, I'm, I'm a new creation. I'm a brand new man. It's like, you can't really explain it. You just know that once you said, yes, Jesus, yes. I let you in. A spiritual work is done because it is the Holy Spirit that does the changing yes. and the increase. It's him that does all the transformation process. It's not something that we can talk you through. That's why accepting Christ is a faith move. It's not something that you say, well, if God do this for me, then I will give my life. And a lot of people, one of the errors that we make so much times is when we find ourselves say, if only God would bless me with some money, mm -hmm. give me the right job, get the house, get the wife, get the car, get the husband, then I will decide to serve God. You know what the enemy sit by and listen to you is talking like that, what he does? He be ensure that you never get these things. And not to say that he has power to stop, but guess what? When you are not under God's covering, who is that loose in your life? Mm -hmm. he, he's two gods. Mm -hmm. And his idea is yes. serving the God of this world or yes. you're serving the one true and living God. And when you speak things like that, you are going contrary to the word of God, which says that you should seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. And then the things of this world, will, the things that you need will be added unto you. David said, the Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. When you allow God to lead you, then you do not have to worry about the cares of the world. You make him the principal preeminence, give him preeminence in your life to take ultimate authority then you will see the other things if you could do it all by yourself you would not need a savior amen, amen. so it's time for us to stop playing god stop trying to fix our lives on our own amen. and understand that you need a savior when amen. you surrender your life to him then he amen. will do the transforming amen. hallelujah and we want to close out right here amen. where christ says christ christ ended everything in a in a final thing where he said verily verily i say unto you i speak that you must be born again and nicodemus answered and said how can these things be but christ answered and said born of the water and of the spirit and when we say born of the water if you notice a thing with birth the first natural birth mm. it's crazy mm. when you have the natural birth anything that comes forth from god always kind of proceed with water <laughs> mm. remember when this earth was first being created, it was upon water and darkness was upon the fearful <laughs> earth and God separated the water. Water always proceed. So in where there is water, where there is chaos, where there is chaos, the spirit of God shows up. And when the spirit of God showed up in Genesis 1, there was chaos. The, world, the earth was without form and void and there was darkness on the earth. And God spoke. And from the speaking of God's word, everything came to order. Today, your life may feel like chaos, but I'm saying to you, if you will allow God to speak into your life, God spoke to Nicodemus, whether he had the heart to receive it, if he had the heart to receive it, he could have been saved. Amen. 
and he would not have perished. Just like with the rich young ruler, Christ give you the word yes. and say, sell all you have. There's a word that is for you. <clears throat> and sometimes when God speaks, some people say they can't. Christ spoke to Peter and the apostle Peter was able to receive the word. And because he received the word, he received the transformation and his life would never be the same. He Amen. got that new, he got that rebirth. He got that change, that, that creation, that new creation came out of him. You understand? And, and I like what Sister Gia said, humans are made of 98% water, right? And, and hear what happened in childbirth. Yes, Sister Nisha, that's what you said, right? In childbirth, water has to break before baby comes, right? Isn't that true? So you see, water precede life, mm -hmm. precede word. And so when you talk about the water baptism, that is why it's so necessary. It's, a, it's the forerunner. It is that which the water precedes and under you die and you come up a new person and so that is why the water baptism you see you'll be born of the water and of the spirit you understand and then we see christ being the sacrifice that we accept and so that is why the blood is when you hear we talk about the triune birth we talk about water and the spirit and the blood what we talk about the blood is christ being the sacrifice because sin has to be atoned for when if you are going to be born again and christ is the atonement so he his blood was shed that is why you have to go through him to get to to god because you cannot go and kill no bullock and do no chicken sacrifice and any of those things to get to to get to god anymore you have to go through the messiah Amen. through yeshua mashiach and so he is the way the truth the life that is the whole truth and nothing but the truth. Mm -hmm. Nicodemus had to understand that and God taught him that. And when he learned that mystery, John documented it so that we might learn mm -hmm. that the first step to receiving anything from Christ is to acknowledge who he is and mm -hmm. that he's a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. Mm -hmm. I want you to take us to the throne of grace, yeah. evangelist, and just, and just lead Lord us God. into this. And we come under the covering of the blood now. And we say no weapon Hallelujah. formed against us. In the name of Yeshua Mashiach. Every tongue that rises up against us, yes, we Lord. silence, we and, silence condemn. and condemn. Yes. We put on the whole armor yes, of God Lord. now, yes. even as we have prayed it before. Yes. Because even Father, right now, we want to address that spirit of religion. Yes. Many of us are bound by a spirit of religion. Yes. Where we are following man-made doctrines yes. and man-made guidance and rules, and we have forsaken the word of God. Hallelujah. We call ourselves Christians, mm -hmm. and as callers Christians, we're responsible for following the teachings of Yeshua, Jesus Christ. Yes. Jesus Christ is Lord. How he has it. We don't have a better way than how the word of God has it. Yes. We don't have a better teaching than the teachings of the word of God. Yes. So we have to get to a place now. I am appealing to you as you read the scriptures, read mm -hmm. the gospels, read mm -hmm. the book of Acts, mm -hmm. and said, Am I? Yes. Am I doing it the way that Yeshua Jesus Christ? Christ Come is doing on. it. Am I doing it as a man-made religion? Yes. Remember one of the things that Yeshua, when Yeshua came, he addressed the spirit of religion yes. that was existing in the scribes and the Pharisees. Yes. He called many of the things doctrines of devils Hallelujah. that had been set up. Mm -hmm. Are you following a doctrine of a devil or a doctrine that a man has set up yes. and you are following it instead of the word, word of, of God? God? Yes. Flee from it, people yes. of God. Repent from it, people yes. of God. Remember, it's religion that killed so many people yes. in the crusades back then. Mm -hmm. It wasn't being led by the Spirit. Spirit of God. So you have mm -hmm. to make sure that you're following the Spirit and the, the Word of God. God. Yes practical things. Yes. The word of God says, repent and be ye baptized. Yes, there shouldn't have yes. to be a delay for you to baptize. baptize yes. As everywhere you read it in the word of God, once you accept Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, you yes. repent. Look at the story with the Ethiopian eunuch, eunuch with Philip. Look at what happened. The man believed and immediately the word of God says, mm -hmm. they went down into the water. If you read the book of Acts, you see that it's an immediate thing that should take place. But many of us, we are following these rules and mm -hmm. these laws that has been set up by men and institutions saying they have a better way. Yes. There can be no better way There's than the no word of God and the teachings of Yeshua. Yes. Open your Bible. Yes. Read the book of John. Yes. Start and look at everything that he did. Yes. One of the things that I had to do years ago mm -hmm. when I was there and I'm going, I'm saying, Lord, I see this in the Bible. This yes. is happening. Yes. Why am I not doing this? Experiencing it. Why, yes. why is this not being manifested in my life? Yes. I had to be delivered from religion. Yes. Because religion will make you believe that you can't lay hands on the sick and yes. they are healed. Religion will make you believe that you can't cast out devils. Yes. And religion will make you believe that tongues is not for now with yes. prayer. Yes. 
because we are boxed in by religion. Mm -hmm. But Father, now in the mighty name of Yeshua, yes, Jesus Christ, I come against the spirit in of the religion. Of I come against man-made rules and Yeshua. institutions yes, that exalted itself Let against God the knowledge destroy. of the word of God. And we may take it captive and command yes, it to Lord. be lined yes. up to the word of God. Yes, in the mighty name of Yeshua, in the yes, name Lord. of yes. Jesus Christ, yes, we Lord. push back against you. Yes, we Lord. say, let those bonds of wickedness yes. be loose. Let the captivity of your mind be released yes, in the mighty name of Yeshua, in the, in the mighty, mighty name, name of, of Jesus yes. Christ. Yes. We come against the spirit of pride. Yes. Because Yeshua Jesus Christ did not walk in pride. Yes. He walked in humility. Yes. And many people want to use the example and say, oh, King David did rich. Solomon was rich. You were not called to be a, a Solomist, who they would call you a Solomon. Were you the Solomon? Yes. Or a Davidian? Yes, you're, you're called, called to, be, to a be a Christian. And as a Christian, you are a follower of Christ. Yes. That means that when you open the word of God, anything Christ did, you should seek to do. Yes, yes. We have not attained as cry as 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 Paul um says. Paul said. Mm -hmm. But this one thing we do, mm -hmm. we forget the things that are behind yes. and we press on to the calling. Yes. We have not perfected yes. all that Yeshua Jesus Christ did, but we press towards we to do it. Towards we it. keep doing, we keep moving towards yes. to do this. Forget the things that are behind. Forget the things that are behind. Forget that we the press past on. mistakes. Because a lot of times a lot of us get trapped into the last thing that you did wrong. Yes. And, and the enemy wants to understand this. The Holy Spirit only, only, only prick your mind to convict you towards yes. repentance. Yes. Anything beyond after you've repented, if you continue feeling guilt, that is not that the Holy not Spirit. The Holy Spirit, once you have confessed your sin, the word, the word of God said is faithful and just, just to forgive, to you, forgive of you of your sins and, and cleanse, cleanse you. you from all unrighteousness. So when you pray, when you ask God to redeem you, if you go and make peace with your brother, because yes. sometimes there are offenses that were that happened yes. where we have to be transparent and be open to those we have hurt and apologize. Sometimes we may need to do that. When we do all of that and we have we have we have God has forgiven us. We need to get to a place where we now release that thing and don't allow the enemy, the oppressor, to come and oppress you on those matters. For there is no condemnation but, to them who are in Christ Jesus. Yes. Walk not after the flesh, but after the spirit. Yes. But make sure that you're walking after the spirit and yes. not after the flesh. Yes. How do you know that you're walking after the spirit? Mm -hmm. You should manifest the fruit of the spirit, the fruit of the which spirit. is love, mm -hmm. joy, mm -hmm. peace, patience, yes. kindness, neatness, gentleness, self control yes how do you know that you're following religion and not jesus christ mm -hmm. if you are not doing the things that he taught if you are not walking out and acting out the teachings of yeshua yes then that's your check to know if you are doing religion yes man-made rules and religion yes and that's not what yeshua came to die he came to set us free yes he came to redeem you come on and even right now if you are not even at step one we spoke about step one with nicodemus hmm. nicodemus couldn't even acknowledge that yeshua was the son the living god yes if you have not done that right now, I invite you to do that. Yes. And it does. You do it by just saying this. I believe mm -hmm. that Yeshua, Jesus Christ, yes, is, is the, the Christ. son of the living mm -hmm. God. Mm -hmm. And I accept him as, as my, my personal Lord, Lord and yes, Savior. That's where it starts. Father, I repent yes. of my sins. And Come you can on, tell him the things words. that you do. Mm -hmm. I acknowledge that I was a sinner. Yes. I am a sinner. Yes. And I need the saving grace. I yes. need the blood of Yeshua to wash me Hallelujah. and cleanse Hallelujah. me of my Hallelujah. sins. Hallelujah. Save me, Lord. Deliver me. Mm -hmm. Redeem me, Lord. Mm -hmm. And then, Lord, fill me with your, with your Holy, Holy Spirit. Yes. I want to put away the earthy things. I want to embrace the spirit things because yes. I want to see the kingdom of God. Hallelujah. Once you do Glory that, you are saved. And once you do that, your next step is just saying, you know, just as a lot of people say they are saved and they are not baptized. If you are a Christian, it's a requirement. Why? Because Yeshua did it. Yes. Yeshua got baptized. Mm -hmm. So even as the Ethiopian eunuch, even as Philip did to the Ethiopian eunuch, once he came to the knowledge of the word, the word of God says they went. He said, here is water. What stopped me from being baptized? Mm -hmm. And he became baptized. 
So we are saying that if you are even bound by a religion, spirit of religion, we pray that you will be free now and delivered as you read and as you hear the word of God. Yeshua, Jesus Christ said, I come that you may have life and have life more abundantly. If you're in a period of frustration, Hallelujah. it may be because you're following religion yes, and not Yeshua, and not Jesus yes, Christ. Yes, because who the Son sets free is free indeed. Yes. Yeshua said, I've come. As he said, come unto me, all, all ye that labor, labor and are heavy laden, and I'll give you rest. Yes. Yes. He told his disciples, go ahead and make disciples after you. Yes. This gospel people of God needs to go to the ends of the earth. Yes. It's not just pass away and an evangelist responsibility Everyone to give the word. Has, we yes. are making disciples who in turn should be making with disciples. Yes. It's about producing it's after production. your kind. Yes. It may be your family members that yes. you're sharing the word with. Yes. It may be co-workers. Yes. It may be children at your school mm -hmm. or friends. But you should be telling people about, about Yeshua, Jesus, Jesus yes. Christ. Yes. Yes. You are the light. Of you the are the source, the source of the, of the earth. earth. Yes. A city on a hill Hallelujah. that cannot be hid. So even Father, right now, if there's no boldness with it, Lord, in if the there's no fire, Jesus. if there's no joy to share boldness your work, I pray Spirit. that your Holy Spirit will come. We yes. invoke the Holy Spirit yes. into your now, lives in now. In the name of Yeshua. Because the Holy Spirit comes and yes. he's the one that gives you the boldness. Yes. He's the one that gives you the fire and the passion yes. for the yes. things yes. of yes. God and the word of God. So Father God, now I pray that you may baptize them and fill them with, with your, your Holy, Holy Spirit. Spirit. Yes. Fill them that they may be overflowing, that yes. they can contain this yes. joy of your presence, yes, God. Lord. Even as they read your word, yes, as Jesus. they feed upon your word, yes. God, let out of their belly flows rivers of water, oh God Almighty. Mm -hmm. Father God, do a new thing into the lives of those who are listening right now, that they may go from glory to glory and strength to strength. In the name of Yeshua, Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. Amen. And that is the prayer. If you say that prayer today with evangelists just now, you just need to believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and you are saved. Amen. And if you confess those words today, you are saved. You want to connect with us. We are on every Saturday at 930. Go ahead and share this out to someone. You know, we always say that. You know, just being the work of an, of, of an evangelist is simply just to call people to come to yes. see where Christ is being taught. Yes. And the, the whole duty of us as people of God is to share this gospel message to those who are needing to hear God's light. We can have the antidote to the cure, the cure to this epidemic, this pandemic of sin, and we do not share it with others. That is very selfish. Mm. So I say to you, be an unselfish Christian and go ahead and share this out. You know, be, if, you, if you have not done so yet, go ahead and subscribe um, to us on <clears throat> Facebook. Go ahead and subscribe to us on YouTube. Go ahead and subscribe to us um, in uh, Instagram. And also, you know, just, just wherever the social media platform is, um, just go ahead and subscribe there that you can stay in tune to us and be connected to this word. Um, I see Br Brother Michael is raising his hands. He wanted to say something. Go ahead, Brother Michael. I was just going to add to the um, the fact of the sharing. Um, most people really don't really like to talk to people. Um, just this little sharing with your contacts or on social media or just taking a little extra time to just at least say, you know what, let me pinpoint a few people in my phone, then I'm going to share it to them. Whether they come on or not, at least I give them the option to, and eventually they'll start doing it because – I do. I've been sharing for a good minute and I don't get a lot of feedback from it, but I do get one or two people mm -hmm. and the people that do come on, they really do need to hear these things sometimes. Amen. And God it does bless. help transform in their life. So um, it, it makes a big help when you do share, even if you don't take something from it and everything is good for your life, just that extra share helps. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And, you know, thank you so much, um, Brother Michael. And the word today it's, it's, it feels like one of those simple messages, but sometimes we overcomplicate God, you know, <clears throat> and it's the golden text of the Bible. And it's that for God so love. We yes. talk about love and sacrifice that yes. he gave his greatest sacrifice to save humanity. Um, God, God's love reached back into eternity and accumulates at Calvary. Imagine everything that happened from the sin from the Garden of Eden, it accumulated at Calvary. 
And so God allowed a saving. When he said in, in, in Genesis 3 and verse 15 that the seed of the woman shall bruise the serpent's head, that was a prediction that was made to save mankind through Christ. You have been, provision has been made for us to be saved. The prayer that was prayed, I pray that you have said that. And if you have not, you can go and replay this, this, this teaching and go ahead and say the prayer. And God, I promise you, you don't understand. To stand outside of the water and speak about what it feels like to be in the water is ludicrous. You have got to. The water is troubled, my friend. Step in. Yes, yes, and when yes. you step in, you shall receive, you shall see. And you're like, ooh, as the word of God says, taste and see that, that the Lord, Lord is good. good. Blessed is the man that, that trusted trust in, in Hallelujah. him. Thank that's what Lord. the psalmist says. And I'm, that's my prayer for you today, that you will taste and see that he is good. God, is good. God bless your heart. Shabbat shalom. Shabbat shalom. Have a wonderful rest of day, guys. And God be with you. Rest in his peace and let the joy of God be your portion. Amen. We love you and so does Jesus Christ. Bless Amen. you. Shalom, shalom.